Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to a brand new class of Philippians chapter 3. We are starting, yes, we are starting a brand new section. And today, oh, look who just dropped by. Brother Jorge is here with me. How are you, Jorge? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so we're starting a brand new section. We're so happy just to be here in this, uh, in these memes, in mm -hmm. this platform with all of you. Uh, we had a little bit of a break. Yes. But I hope you rejoiced in that break. Yeah, it was a glorious break. <laughs> it was a glorious break. <laughs> we did put out some content for you, uh, reminiscing or uh, uh, recapping our Easter week. Mm -hmm. So we're back, and we're back to start our Philippians chapter 3, Leaning Law and, pres and Pressing On to Jesus. So we're starting our brand new section, which is Paul's utter confidence in a living relationship with Jesus Christ. So we're going to start on, uh, we're in chapter 3, and we're going to start reading verse 8. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Very well. So, Paul's gain in Jesus Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss. Paul did not only count his religious, religious pedigree as a loss. He counted all things loss. But it, he counted them as a loss in view of the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. remember that we saw Paul's pedigree. Yeah. We saw where he came from, what tribe that he belonged to, what the studies that he had, the, the accolades that he had, and he had elite accolades. Yeah, he was a Pharisee. Almost, of, he was almost a the Jew above all Jews. <laughs> he was a Hebrew from <laughs> Hebrews, a Pharisee of, uh, yeah. of Pharisees. But right here, in, in, in verse 8, he says, none of that matters. Mm -mm. So th they're all lost to me. They're all losses to me. I don't really care. But in the view of the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? So yet indeed, Wes says this about this uh, phrase alone. The translation of five particles, which la uh, later uh, are literally translated, yeah, indeed, therefore, at least, and even, and show the force and passion of Paul's conviction. This shows how much Paul changed. Yeah. This shows how much he, the knowledge in which he was getting to know Jesus really changed them. And he was speaking with a lot of passion here, with a lot of force in regards to having a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, he spoke with a lot of fervor. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that he, he, the more he got into Christ, mm -hmm. the more he's like, I don't care about whatever right. was, was was before me, like my pedigree, my status, my money, whatever it was. He's like, yeah. I don't care. The what I'm gaining in Christ is way more than what I had before. Now let let us to us we need to lose everything as well, you know. But we're not saying that you know stop studying, you know accolades that you receive, you know. It's it's good to to better yeah. yourself, but we're not we're not saying not to better it, yourself. The thing is, in terms of that, it was he was giving himself up. Not right, not, not, right. That's like, it. That's it. Yeah. It's not so much that he's not happy about those accolades or whatever yeah. it may be. It's more along the lines of he's humbling himself before the Lord saying that whatever you give me is more precious than that what I have already gained. Absolutely. So we're not saying that for you to not, you know, uh, mm -hmm. better yourself, but all those things that you have here mm -hmm. on this, in this earth, they will stay here. Yeah. But the only thing that you're going to take with you is your soul. Mm -hmm. Your soul is going back to the Father. But whatever you do here, you know, God has given you that ability, first of all, and you have gained all those things because of him. And sometimes, well, we forget, yeah. you know, I did it. You know, I did all those things. I got that degree. I did that. But no, actually, God helped you get those things. Mm -hmm. So here you see that despite mm -hmm. Paul's pedigree, Paul's accolades, Paul's abilities, he said, None of those matter anymore to me. The mm -hmm. only thing that matters, my objective, my purpose is Jesus alone. Mm -hmm. And you can see that right then and there. 
So it wasn't so much that those things were worthless in themselves, but compared to the greatness of the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, they really were nothing. Only knowing Jesus, that's the only thing that mattered to him. Getting closer to Jesus, yeah. knowing about Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, doing God's work. That is what really mattered to Paul, and it should matter to us as well. We should take that as an mm -hmm. example. Yes, we should take it as an example. Like, uh, everything we do, we should do for God. Right. And, it, and that's what Paul actually teaches us with not only his words in, in the Bible, but with his actions that are shown throughout the Bible. Absolutely. He gave everything up to God, yeah. and he let himself... He was okay with the suffering because he knew what was to come. <laughs> yes, including when, when God called him. Mm -hmm. He told Ananias, he's going to suffer for my mm -hmm. cause. He's going to go to kings. He's going to go to the Gentiles. He's going to do this, but he's going to suffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the Spanish class, I always say that the best way to define Paul's life is suffering. Yeah. To say the least. <laughs> because that's what it was. Yeah. He suffered a lot. He went through a lot of stuff. You know, <laughs> shipwrecks. Yeah, he went through everything. <laughs> he went through everything. But in that expense, the greatness to know Jesus Christ, that is everything that mattered to him. Yes. Right? So Paul here put a personal relationship with Jesus Christ at the very center of the his Christian life. How many of us, and this is a question for all of us, how many of us have put Jesus at the center of our life? Hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> How many of us have placed Jesus as the center of our lives, that everything revolves around him? You know, because we want things to revolve around us, what we want, our wants, our desires. But Jesus, in Paul's life, was the center. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking all of you who are listening to me right now and, and, and watching us at home, is Jesus the center of your life? And if not, what is your center? What do you have placed in the center of your life that is occupying Jesus' rightful place? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's, that's something that takes your mind away. As I said. Hypothetically, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have to answer out loud. <laughs> you, you don't, but it's, it, it it will make you reflect. I mean, it definitely does make you reflect because a lot of us think, you know, we're doing so many things for Christ, but right. there, there's a lot. Sometimes we have that. How can we say hidden agenda behind all of those actions? Right, right, absolutely. Be, it's not because Christ is at your center. You're like, maybe if I do this. God will reward me. It's not about doing no, it for the reward. It's, it's not about the reward. It, it's about actually putting Christ at the center and whatever happens, happens. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's it. Paul put his, in his personal life Jesus at the center of his life, right? He joyfully accepted the loss of other things for the greatness of his personal relationship. You know, you need to lose everything. Mm -hmm. You need to start letting go of those things that are not beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And those things that, well, you have gained successes that don't really matter. Right? You have accomplished them through God's help, yes. But those successes won't get you to heaven. No, and it's not like God will take them away from you. No. <laughs> no, those successes still He has exist. allowed you to get them, yes. yes. He allowed you to have them. God is not going to take away those successes from you. It, in reality, is within those successes, something has to be even better than that of your success. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. something, something better will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in Philippians 3, 7, Paul said that he counted. In this verse, he said, I also count. Right? So, why is he saying this? This first counting was his first his conversion. The second, some 30 years later, was in his Roman prison. Now, why did he count and he counted? Was because when he first had that first encounter with God, it changed him. That first encounter with Jesus knocked him off his horse. But this one, he kept encountering Jesus. I think 
so, also the way I see it yeah. is that when he first encountered God, when he knocked him off his horse, he really started to see what he was losing. While when in the prison, everything summarizes into one what loss. Lost. Yeah. Into yeah. one loss. Everything yeah. that his... Well, he didn't care. He was yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything was one loss. Everything that he lost was equal to one another. Not one was higher than that of another. He, but the, what he was gaining was more. Was more. So he lost... when he, His first conversion, as he counted, mm -hmm. he was beginning to lose everything. Yeah. But now, you seem a, a person that has lost absolutely everything. That everything's a loss. <laughs> everything's a loss to him. You know, the first encounter, he lost everything. Mm -hmm. And here, everything's a loss. <laughs> yeah. Good way to put it. <laughs> That's exactly how how many of us can say that though? No, not many of us can say that <laughs> that I mean, let's just face it, we as humans will count our losses. We know when we have failed. Actually, your memory will more likely remember, remember your a failures. failure yeah. than that Ra of your rather success. than your, your successes, yes. Like it it'll cause more emotions. At this point, Paul has already lost absolutely everything. That he, does, he, he has no go, emotion for, for he what couldn't he couldn't go does. anywhere. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't go anywhere. He was stuck in a prison cell. So, I mean... Everything in his human life, in this human world, was lost. And he was about to lose his life. Yes. Yeah, he was about to die. Yeah. But he knew what he had gained. He had gained more than uh -huh. what any of us could imagine. Exactly. He gained a lot. So in his loss, he gained. Mm-hmm. After all, he had experienced, he still counted it worthy to give everything up for the sake of following mm -hmm. Jesus. That is exactly what we should do. Mm -hmm. You know, giving up everything, we're still worthy, you know. Mm -hmm. And whether to give up everything for the, for, for the sake of Jesus, to follow Jesus, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. If you think that it's not worth it, then you must have a problem. Then this path isn't for you. If you don't, if you don't want to lose, well, it's kind of like when he's like, you have to give everything up, and the person didn't. It, the path was right, right. Um, it was too much for him to bear to lose everything. When when Jesus encountered the rich, the rich yeah, man, yeah, when he's like, come and follow me. Well, let me, let me set, let me settle up everything. Uh -huh. Well, he let him go. He's like, don't, don't follow me. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, it's it's even in the Bible. It's the first is um, mm -hmm. whoever comes before me, deny yourself, pick up your cross, mm -hmm. and follow me. But then the second verse says, Those who are willing to win everything, they will lose. But those who are willing to lose everything for my sake, they will win. Mm -hmm. Right? So Paul knew that for Jesus' sake, he was willing to lose everything mm -hmm. because the gain was even greater. Mm -hmm. So Spurgeon says this after 20 years of or more of experience, Paul had an, an opportunity of revising his balance sheet and looking again at his estimates and seeing whether or not his counting was correct. What was the issue of his latest search? How did the matter stand in his last stock taking? Right? That's what it says. Mm -hmm. okay. he, exclaim, he exclaims with very special emphasis, yeah, doubt, doubtless, and I count all things but, lo but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of uh, Christ Jesus, my Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of accounting terms in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I noticed. I noticed. Oh, huh? <laughs> well, like balance sheet estimates. Yeah. And Paul was a very, very smart, intelligent. Well, he sells tents. Yeah. Yeah. He, he sold he, tents. So, so yeah. he, he obviously counted everything that he lost. He was a good negotiator. Yeah, you can yeah, say that. He, yeah. yeah, a good salesperson. <laughs> like I said, he knew what he was losing. He always counted what he was losing, mm -hmm. but he counted at the end in his balance sheet, so to speak, metaphorically. Right. He realized that there was a higher gain, a higher profit, so to speak, than that of what he had already lost. Now. The question is for all of us, do you know what you're losing? Do, do you know what you're losing? 
I mean, are you still holding on to the certain things that you don't want to let go? You need to let those things go in order to follow Jesus. You know? Because when you follow Jesus, you have nothing worth to lose. You have nothing worth losing because you don't have anything. Because you gave it up. <laughs> you only have Jesus. Usually what will happen when you decide to choose God mm -hmm. and Jesus is that you will give up what you value the most. You will you, lose what you value the most. You give up who you are too. Yeah. And the reality is that within that loss, you will find the gain. It may not immediately come to you. Yeah. It, it is a struggle. You have to realize that Paul had to struggle, lose everything to gain what he really wanted was to be in, have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And that's the same thing with us. We will get, we have to give up usually what we value more above ourselves, above our lives, above everything. And within that loss, that's when you're going to gain perspective of what, re what really matters. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's worth it to lose everything mm -hmm. for, the, for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, we always talk about, to me, to die, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, for me to, uh, mm. to, li to live in, I forgot, but I'm going to be to, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to give up something. You need to give up your life. And that loss is not necessarily forever. No. He uh, could give it back to you. Mm -hmm. It's just that your willingness to sacrifice that shows, tells God that you're willing to do anything Whatever to, it takes. Whatever mm -hmm. it takes to be with him. That, the, that God is more va of value than that of what you have lost. Yeah. Because you're putting God first. Mm -hmm. Above everything else. Yes. That is, that is what it is. That is basically the excellence of the knowledge of, mm -hmm. of, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. So let, let us see. Okay, let me see. Oh, we're good. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. This counting loss was not merely an in internal spiritual exercise. Paul had indeed suffered the loss of all things that he might gain Christ, right? This is demonstrated by the place and circumstances under which Paul wrote the letter, a Roman prison, where he truly could say that he had suffered the loss of all things, right? And we continue on. <laughs> Count them as rubbish. What, what does it mean? Garbage. Paul here used strong <laughs> language. Literally, Paul considered them as excrement, as dung. <laughs> Not only as worthless, but as offensive. Mm -hmm. The ancient Greek word for rubbish had one or two uses. Let's see what they are. It could describe excrement from the body or table scraps that were fit only to thrown to the dogs. We may suppose that Paul would be comfortable with either meaning in this context. Now, Clark says that the word rubbish means the violent dross or refuse of anything, the worst excrement. The word shows how utterly insignificant and unveiling and in a point of, of salvation. The apostle esteemed everything but the gospel of Jesus Christ. So everything to him was excrement except the gospel. Mm -hmm. So he put the gospel first. He put Jesus first, what represented Christ first. Mm -hmm. And everything, everything material, everything that didn't matter for him was trash, mm -hmm. basically. So we will stop right here, Jorge. Okay. Because next week we're going to start on verse 9. But this is something very important for us to understand. And it brings me the question of, of the message that Pastor Jack preached. Mm -hmm. How are we treating our relationship with God? What is our level of commitment with our relationship with God? Are we treating it like rubbish? 
Or are we willing to lose everything and do whatever it takes for Jesus? Because when you really, really have that commitment, you're willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. You're willing to give up everything. Give up who you are. Give up your desires. Give up your dreams. Give up exactly everything else. And you place Jesus as your everything. Mm -hmm. Because he becomes your everything once you decide to give up everything that you keep on holding. So with that being said, I just want to thank you. I want to bless your life right now. Keep on heading forward and let go of all those things that are holding you back. Stop holding on to those things that are, to those sins that, or, or to whatever you keep on holding. In order to move forward, you need to start looking forward. You need to set your eyes and fix your eyes on Jesus. Let go of those things that are not of benefit for you. They're trash in your life. And in fact, start asking God to take out the trash from your heart. There's a lot of things in your heart that not, they're not coinciding, that they're not well, and you need to get rid of them. So today, I just want to say, let them go. Let go of all those things that are not of God. Let, all go, of, let go of all those things that are going to limit and devalue your relationship with God. Once you let go, you will start growing in God. Amen. So with that being said, thank you for this time. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you here next week for more of Philippians chapter.